Thank you for choosing the 10x10 Meridian Gazebo from Yardistry. We're confident you'll find the assembly process straightforward as you work through each step in the assembly manual. To help you even more, we created these helpful hint videos offering tips and tricks we've learned along the way for handling some of the more challenging and critical steps. Before you begin the assembly process, sort your inventory. Lay each of the wood parts and hardware components on the ground. Then take a few minutes to cross-reference each one with the list in the assembly manual. Remember, we're always here to help. Contact us if you find a part that is damaged or missing. Take a moment to record the carton ID stamp for each box that you receive. Record them on page 11 of your assembly manual. Insert T-nuts into the two holes at the bottom of a post. Now place a post mount on one side so that it's tight to the bottom and inside faces of the post. Attach loosely with a hex bolt. Then repeat to install a second post mount at the bottom of the post. Next, place a plinth on one side of the post so that it's flush to the bottom. Attach it with four wood screws. Repeat to install plinths on the other three sides of the post. Use two pan screws to secure each post mount to the inside of each post. It's okay to insert these at an angle. Now secure each post mount to the bottom of each post using two wood screws. Then tighten the bolts. In step 3, position a left outside beam on a solid flat and raised surface. You'll know it's the left outside beam because when the notched end is facing down, the angled end faces up. After inserting two T-nuts into the notched end, flip the left outside beam over and connect the notched ends of the left outside beam and right outside beam. Attach them with two hex bolts. Get a helper to check the alignment of the boards at eye level. When the boards are straight, tighten the hex bolts. Now insert T-nuts into both ends of an inside long beam. Flip it over and attach a beam end on one end using two hex bolts. Get a helper to check the alignment of the boards at eye level, then tighten the bolts. Repeat to attach a second beam end to the inside long beam. Next, place an inside beam assembly onto an outside beam assembly. If the bolt heads are in the way, you'll want to go back to the beginning of this step to properly identify a left outside beam. Make sure the bolt holes match up and the mitered ends align. Then push long bolts through these four holes temporarily. Secure the boards with wood screws at each end. Then in the middle, once again, a long bolt might come in handy for positioning the boards. If the second mitered end isn't flush, loosen the bolts in the beam end. Then adjust the boards using a long bolt if necessary. Get a helper to hold the boards in place, then secure with wood screws. Now retighten the bolts in the beam end. Repeat each of these steps to make three more beam assemblies. Get at least four people to help with frame assembly in step four. Begin by positioning the four posts in the final location of the gazebo. Next, with ladders and a helper on each side, lift the first beam assembly into place against the top of two posts. As you're doing this, check the location of the gusset holes. If they're not at the bottom of the beam assembly, flip it over to make sure they are. Now make sure the end of the beam is flush to the top and side of a post before attaching it with a hex bolt. Repeat to attach the other end of the beam to a second post. The second hole on each beam remains empty for now. It will be used in a later step. Repeat each step to attach three more beams to the assembly. As you're positioning the beams, make sure the mitered corners fit together tightly. Once all of the beams are in place, it's time to check the measurements of your gazebo. It should measure 9 feet 1 and 7 8 inches from the outside edge of adjacent posts. Measuring diagonally from the inside corner of one post to another, it should measure 11 feet 7 and 7 8 inches. Make sure each post is square to the beams. 
If they're not aligned right, use your foot to make adjustments at the bottom of the post. Check each post to make sure it's level too, once again adjusting as necessary. Now make sure each beam is level. When the frame is level and square, insert lag screws into the holes at the top of each post and tighten the bolts. In step 5, lay a gusset down on a flat surface with a notched end facing down and insert T-nuts into the two holes. Repeat to insert T-nuts in the same manner on all eight gussets. Now get a helper to hold a gusset in place against one post on the frame assembly. Make sure the end with the T-nuts is at the top and both notched ends of the gusset fit tightly against the post and beam. Attach the gusset to the beam with two hex bolts. Use three hex lags to attach the other end of the gusset to the post. Repeat all of those steps to attach seven more gussets to the frame assembly. In step seven, get an assistant to help position a corner RT and corner LT on each side of a rafter. The notches on all three boards must be facing up once the top edges are flush, attach with two wood screws per side. Next, position a fascia beam assembly against the bottom edges of the corner LT, corner RT, and rafter. Check to make sure the fascia beam assembly is at the same angle as the rafter edge. If it isn't, flip the fascia beam assembly over to achieve the correct angle. Get a helper to hold the end of the fascia beam assembly against the end of the corner LT so that the sides are flush. Attach with one wood screw. Then repeat to attach the other end of the fascia beam assembly to the end of the corner RT. Line up the end of the rafter so that it's centered over the pilot hole in the fascia. Attach with one wood screw. Place a short strap into the notches on the corner LT, corner RT, and rafter. Then place a long strap into the other set of notches. Get a helper to hold the end of the short strap in place so that it's flush to the side of the corner LT and doesn't overhang. Attach with two wood screws. Repeat to attach the other side of the short strap to the corner RT and follow the same steps to attach the strap long to the corner LT and corner RT. Attach the short strap to the rafter with two wood screws. Repeat to attach the strap long to the rafter. Take a moment to look down the sides of the corner LT and RT to make sure the boards are straight and not bowed. Next, lift the assembly to position the rafter short left and rafter short right into the grooves on the strap long. Line up the end of the rafter short left with the pilot hole on the fascia beam assembly. When the boards are flush, attach with one wood screw. Now hold the top of the rafter short left against the side of the corner LT. When the boards are flush, attach with two wood screws. Use two more wood screws to attach the rafter short left to the strap long. Repeat each step to attach a rafter short right to the assembly. Flip the roof rafter assembly over so that the straps are at the bottom. Place a roof to beam bracket flush to the bottom of the rafter short right attached with a hex bolt. Then repeat to install a roof to beam bracket in the same manner on the rafter and the rafter short left. Repeat to install roof to beam brackets on three out of four roof rafter assemblies. The fourth does not require brackets. Gloves are essential for this part of the assembly because roofing material can have sharp edges. To prevent scuffing, remove the clear and blue protective film from both sides of each aluminum part just before you use it. If you're using a power tool, be careful not to over tighten the roofing screws because that can damage the roofing panels. We recommend hand tightening the screws until they're snug. Steps 9 and 10 should be done on a flat, solid, raised surface. Position the long panel left and long panel right onto the roof rafter assembly. 
Make sure the panels overlap at the rib in the center. The panels should be flush to the side of the corner LT and corner RT, and at the bottom there should be a slight overhang of the fascia beam assembly. Attach with four roofing screws in the locations identified here. Next, position the short panel left and short panel right onto the roof rafter assembly so that they overlap the edges of the long panels. Make sure they're flush to the sides of the corner LT and corner RT, and there's a slight overhang of the fascia beam assembly. Make sure the panels don't overhang on the sides. If they do, loosen and remove the roofing screws and adjust the roof panels so they're aligned correctly, then replace and tighten the screws. Now insert the remaining roofing screws into the panels. With a helper, place a roof edge left and roof edge right along the bottom of each roof rafter assembly so that they meet in the center and the ends are flush with the ends of the fascia beam assembly. Attach with roofing screws. Now peel away a small portion of the backing on a strip of weather seal. Then begin attaching it to the rounded bottom of a ridge clip. When you're done applying the full length of weather seal, attach the ridge clip to one side of the roof panel assembly. Take care not to push down on the ridge clip. As you attach it with wood screws, make sure the weather strip is positioned to just meet the aluminum roof panels. It's also important to make sure the ridge clips don't stick up too far at the top. In the correct position, they should look like this. Attach the ridge clip with wood screws, then repeat to install a second ridge clip on the roof panel assembly. Do not attempt step 11 in windy conditions. You'll need four people and three ladders for this step. Position two ladders at the side of the assembly you're working on and the third in the middle of the gazebo. It's important that one person be assigned to remain in the middle throughout the step to support the roof panels. From the outer edge of a post assembly, measure 4 feet 1 and 7 16 inches and make a mark. This is the center of each beam assembly. Now get three people to lift a roof panel over a side of the assembly. Be careful not to damage the roof panels or scratch the beam. As the person in the middle holds the top of the panel in place, make adjustments so that the middle rafter beam bracket is lined up with the center mark. In the correct position, the mitered edge of the fascia will line up with the corner of each beam. Next, lift a second roof panel into place beside the first one. Make sure they're flush at the top and the edge of the fascia is tight to the beam. The outside corner should also line up, and the bottom edge of the corner rafters are flush. Attach loosely with hex bolts, starting from the hole at the bottom and working up to the top. Lift a third panel into place following the same guidelines. It helps to have people at the corners making adjustments to the roof panels and then holding them in place. It may also help to have the person in the center pushing up on the top of the panels so that adjustments can be made along the beams. Once again, attach the panels with three bolts, starting from the bottom. Using a tall ladder inside the gazebo, place the roof peak assembly into the gap at the top of the three roof panels. Make sure the corners of the peak cap line up with the roof ridges. Next, push the two roof peak brackets onto the carriage bolt before attaching the peak loop with just a few twists. Use pan screws to secure the roof peak brackets to each corner LT and corner RT. Lift the fourth roof panel into place. As you do that, have the person in the center push up on the peak cap so that the panel slides underneath it. This is when you'll want helpers outside the gazebo where they can make adjustments and also hold the corners in place. Pushing up at the center may make it easier to align the roof panels. Once the fourth panel is in place, make any necessary adjustments to ensure the mitered ends of each corner LT and corner RT are aligned and the bottom edge of the corner rafters are flush. Attach loosely with hex bolts, starting from the hole at the bottom and working up to the top. If the roof panels don't fit properly, recheck the dimensions. 
If that doesn't resolve the problem, you may find it helpful to review steps 4, 9, and 10. Once you're able to get the panels in place, tighten all of the bolts. Then attach rafter beam brackets to each rafter using a hex bolt. The rafter beam bracket should align with the center mark you place there back in step 11. It may help to have an assistant push up in the middle of the roof panel assemblies as you complete step 15. First loosen the screws in the roof edge at one corner. Now you can lift up the roof edge just enough to insert a wood screw into the end of the fascia beam assembly. Repeat at the other side to insert a wood screw into the second fascia beam assembly. When you're done, retighten the screws in the roof edge on both sides. Place a corner cap where the fascia assemblies meet at one corner. Push up on the corner cap to make sure it's tight to the bottom of the assemblies. Then attach with two sheet metal screws on each side. You can push up on the roof edge slightly to access the top holes. Repeat to install corner caps at each corner of the gazebo. In step 17, get a helper to push up in the middle of the roof assembly. As they're doing so, attach one of the rafter beam brackets to the rafter with a pan screw. Use three more pan screws to attach the rafter beam bracket to the beam. Then tighten the bolt. Repeat to secure all 12 rafter beam brackets in the same manner. In step 18, begin by adjusting the alignment of the peak cap. Get a helper outside the gazebo to confirm when the corners of the peak cap line up with the roof ridges. Now secure the roof peak brackets to the corner LT and corner RT boards using 16 pan screws. Begin step 19 by removing the plastic film from both sides of a ridge cap. As you prepare to install the ridge cap, get a helper inside the gazebo to push up on the peak cap. Slide the ridge cap over the ridge clips and then all the way up to the top where it should slide under the peak cap. Secure the ridge cap with two sheet metal screws. If the ridge cap doesn't slide on smoothly, you could try adding a few drops of liquid soap on the inside of the cap before reinstalling. If the ridge cap still won't go on, or an obstacle is preventing you from getting the end of the ridge cap into position, try bending the ridge clip up along one side. Now hook a side of the ridge cap over the bent edge and push down until it catches. When you're done, remember to secure the peak cap by twisting the peak loop until it's tight. Using a ladder inside the gazebo, measure five and three quarter inches down from the top of a post and make a mark. That's where you'll position the bottom of a twist bracket RT or twist bracket LT. Attach it with four pan screws. It's okay to insert the top screws at an angle if you're tight for space. Repeat to install four twist brackets on your gazebo.